Hello everyone, this is your host for Latina Role Models, Damaris Ramos, and tonight we have... Genevieve Caltiño. Genevieve, we met at the... where we met? Oh my god, yes. that was quite a while back. Gateway. <laughs> Yes, Gateway Orlando. Gateway Orlando. Tell me a little bit about Gateway Orlando. Uh, Gateway Orlando is a district program, and I was there for a couple months, and I promoted businesses, and I learned a lot there. It was really a learning experience. So tonight, it's about you. Tonight, it's about your story. I want them to know you better. So when they look at you, and they like how she got there, but sometimes they don't know the tr the travesty that you have to go through life, the journey that you have to go through to be the woman that you are today. Because even challenges make us who we are. So where are you born? Oh, I've had challenges, yes. And uh, I was born in New York and raised half my life in New York. The other half I was raised in Puerto Rico. So from, raised in New York from Puerto Rican parents? Yes, my family is from Guayama. And uh, they're well known in Guayama, actually. It's, uh, my last name is Cautinho, so there's a famous museum that's in Guayama, que es La Casa Cautinho. And uh, we have a lot of history, the last name Cautinho, because uh, there's a famous horse, it's called Dulce Sueño. And Dulce Sueño is a horse that my ancestors and my family migrated from a breed in Portugal. And that famous horse, Dulce Sueño, brought the well-known Pasofinos to Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. It was all from the Dulce Sueño. There's actually a fair that's celebrated in Puerto Rico, in Guayama, in El Hipódromo, I believe, and they call it La Feria de Dulce Sueño. It's well known, and uh, the horse was huge. I never got to see it. I was not So when you there. go to, to the, you said they, ha they have a museum. Yes. So when you go there, what is it that you, you see there? It's the history of uh, my family, Los Cautinos. Uh, they have so much history in that house and I... Was that I, a house that they lived in? Yes, my families were in politics. Uh, my great-great-grandfather was Hinaro Cautinho in Sua and he uh, was a mayor and he was, he was so kind-hearted, he always gave to the town. In fact, in La Plaza de Guayama, there's a huge fountain, it's so huge. That fountain was actually supposed to be for the house but it was so huge it didn't fit <laughs> <laughs> so it was like okay we can't put that huge fountain in in the, in the house in Puerto Rico the museum it has an interior patio so when they tried to put that huge fountain in there it would practically take the whole patio so they donated it to La, Plas La Plazoleta de Guayama and it's right in front it sits right in front of the La, El, um, La Iglesia mm -hmm. in La Plaza de Guayama but there's a lot of history in the museum. It's beautiful. Everything, it looks untouched when I go there. And it's a bit eerie for me because when I was small, it wasn't a museum. I would actually go there and visit the house. And I would see the maids and everything running around in the house. It was a regular house. But now that I go there as I'm older, nothing's been moved. So I get like flashbacks like, oh my goodness, like so many years have passed and everything is just there. <laughs> That's so cute. It's very interesting. Yes, it is. And this is part of like this show, you know, to, for people to be able to know details about the person that they probably would never have the opportunity to know. Mm -hmm. So then you live how long in New York before you moved to Puerto Rico? I lived half my life in New York. I was born in Manhattan, and I would say maybe to about the age of 20, 19, about 19, about 19 years old. So at home, the, the first language was. My first language was English. But at home? At home, my language was English. My mother would speak English. My father was the one that spoke Spanish. Yeah, because I was wondering, because I, I, when I talked to you, I talked to you in Spanish, and I yes. never <laughs> got that your first language was English. So your father kept the language. Yes, he did. So uh, he would come and speak Spanish to me, and my mother would speak English. And uh, I find that English is a more slower language when you speak. And when my mother was mad, yes, she did speak Spanish. It was always very fast. Because <laughs> we wrote our, our R's. So when she was mad, she would speak Spanish to me. But most of the time, it was English. So then you moved to Puerto Rico. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. About Puerto Rico? And how was that? Because it was, was it a cultural shock? Yes. Even though you had yes, Puerto Rican parents living there is a whole new story. For anyone that's lived or have practically half their life in a city like New York, the city that never sleeps, and you go to 
Puerto Rico, which is a very tropical, beautiful island, it's, it is a cultural shock because you're used to the, like they say, the hustle and bustle, uh, the, the nightlife, the fast pace, everything is rush, rush, rush. And you go to a place that's so calm at night, cookie, cookie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're like, where are the, the, the sound of the city. Different it, sound, it's like, huh? At first, I, I, I was like, I couldn't sleep because the frogs didn't like those. Well, they're not frogs, they're little coquis. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually really cute, but they're scary if you look at them. They like the transparent skin. <laughs> <laughs> but the sound of them didn't let me sleep. But after a while, I got used to it, and it was like something that you don't really realize you're listening it was, to. It became it. a song. It became a song. So, yeah, it is a cultural shock, and it took me a while to get used to, especially the fashion. The New York, the fashion is different. Basically, it's long coats and a lot of sweaters, and even the material is different, a lot of wool. When you go to Puerto Rico, the, the material is so light and so... You know, sleeveless, so shorts, shorts, shorts flip-flops. <laughs> yes. yeah, right, and in New York, it's boots, and it, that was also very hard to me to adapt into, but after a while, you get used to it, like everything. So where did you complete your education? Uh, my education, I started off in Lehman College in New York, and the rest of it was completed in, um, in, a, in the Bilingual University in Puerto Rico, and that's where Who's I, one? I started in Ana G. Mendez, and it's a bilingual university where you do I was learn. not aware that even in Puerto Rico it was bilingual. Well, actually, in Puerto Rico, they speak more of the Spanish language, but you do have English classes that you take, so they do give you the English classes. But there is a, there's a, here, in Florida, there is the university that does do one week in English and the other week in Spanish. So they want to like complete both languages. Yeah. Which to help students is an advantage because eventually, so then how do you end up here? How do I uh, end up here in per in Florida? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Florida. getting confused where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I am in Florida. Uh, Puerto Rico was changing and it has changed a lot from. How long you live there? Maybe about 20 years. So another 20 years of my life. Oh my God, I'm telling my age here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't say how long you've been here, because no, then no. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for makeup, right? <laughs> uh, I moved because I saw that things were changing, and I want. I have a daughter. Uh, she's grown and big now, <laughs> and I wanted to give her um, different cultural experience also, so she could like. She was born in Puerto Rico? She was. She was born in Puerto Rico. And I, know, and I saw that things were changing in Puerto Rico, and I, didn't, I wanted to, her to see another part or another. And I said, uh, how about Florida? I mean, hey, it's the happy, happy land of Disney, Mickey Mouse, mm -hmm. Orlando, mm -hmm. amusement parks. And she had never had experienced those things, which I had. And I did want a different change for her, and I brought her to Florida. We landed in Fort Lauderdale, landed like if I came from out of space. We <laughs> arrived. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> I didn't know land. I arrived. <laughs> and uh, my daughter did find it a little bit hard at first because she didn't want to leave her friends. And, and then she was different from you. She was 100% free. Yes, she was. So that was like the opposite of what I experienced. For her, it was like the tropical beaches, the islands to arrive now well, it's to kind of like lay back to uh, mm -hmm. uh, Florida is not as city like as New York but it has a bit of it has the beaches and it has the attractions and it has a bit of city if you go so she experienced a little bit of everything I decided Florida was something where I wanted her to experience so fast forwarding a little bit so I did match you like probably like a year ago and um, a gateway but right now you're doing something else tell me a little bit more of what you're doing yes I have from the time that we met I've already I would say progressed into other things I now am with the East Orlando Chamber of Commerce and that is not like a district program it's we work with chamber with the businesses and we help businesses progress and get known and we do a lot of networking and promoting businesses and and they have changed quite a while since the time I started visiting I haven't been there probably in a couple of months but um, they have different groups 
that they do every Thursday. Which one, the chamber yeah. or? The East, which one you are? East Orlando? I'm with the East Orlando Yeah, the East Orlando have yes. four different groups that they go, like Nona, they meet at Sam's on Golden Road. Yes, they do. We do a lot of, um, of those, uh, they call coffee clubs. Mm -hmm. And they're really nice because you get to eat coffee and donuts and you get to do a lot of networking. It's a really nice organization to pertain to. We do a lot of events. In fact, there's a big event coming up this June 28th here in Orlando. It's the Business Expo. And uh, that, that is basically on the website, which is the eocc.org. So that's going to be huge. It's going to be huge, all types of businesses, restaurants, uh, commercial businesses. I'm actually also going to be there, but not as the chamber. I'm going to be there uh, with Aflac because I do, I have to wear a lot of hats. I also am an, a licensed agent and I promote or, or I do Aflac products, which are supplemental products. So, but you're also, besides that, you do arts and crafts and yes, you were talking about that is about my therapy. Prayers. Tell me a little bit more about that. I do so many things. My hobby and my, how could I say, my, mm, to, like, really stress. To find that <laughs> peaceful yes. moment. I like doing artwork. I work with different types of mediums and I craft things. I, I don't have that much time sometimes to work on my artwork because there's so many things that I've been doing in my life that I normally start something and I try and finish it but I love crafts because it, it re helps me release stress and tension I have some samples of the things that I do mm -hmm. I normally I start with simple things like wire and aluminum foil and with that I'm able to create um, sculptures and you add clay and so on. So I brought some of the things in the stages of not completed, and uh, I'm gonna show one. I start off with, let me get here. Where did this start, you know? What was the idea, the motivation? My mother, bring it, bring it my mother was very creative. I think I became creative because of her. So this is one of the sculptures that I'm star I start. It starts off with wire. And what I do is I foil it with aluminum foil and I put it on a block of wood. So this is like the skeleton of my creation. So let's see creation. the next step. This is one of them. The next step, I start adding things like elements. Here, uh -huh. I accessories. add elements and accessories. And this is supposed to be a beekeeper. And this is supposed to be a beehive. Where it's, it's not finished yet, but once it's finished, it's going to have honey rolling down and like little bees. Okay, and next step. Yeah, the next step. And this, as you could see before I go into the next step, I'm starting to put the clay on them. Okay. Now, each artist has their different ways of like creating things. Some use paper mache. Some use filmo. It's a plastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, I use a hard, hard clay. If you touch it, it's, it turns so So you don't have hard. to put it in an in oven or anything no. like that. It will just dry it up. It, this will just dry up. But I do have other mediums. Well, Henevi, for yes. some reason we have run out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it has been such a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> okay, thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. This has been the Maris Ramos for Latino Models. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>